Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. To ask a question during the question and answer session, please press star 1. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I will turn the call over to Mr. Leland Milstein, so you may begin. Thanks very much, Kelly, and thanks everyone for joining us today for this session of the Alliance for Community Trees webcast series. The AC Trees Third Thursday webcast series is a monthly webcast held at the lunch hour. These trainings leverage local successes by amplifying to a larger audience two model organizations' methods, materials, and approaches. Sessions are planned to last no more than one hour, with two presenters speaking on the same topic from slightly different perspectives, each for 10 to 15 minutes, followed by 10 to 15 minutes of questions and answers from the audience. Today's session is approved by the ISA for one CEU hour and by SAF for one CFE Category 2. If you haven't already given me your certification numbers, please just email them to me after the session. That way we can make sure you're getting your credits. Also, most state landscape architecture boards require only a certificate of completion, which AC Trees can provide to anyone who requests one. So again, just email me after the session. This is a program of the Alliance for Community Trees. We are a national network of local nonprofits, city governments, and affiliated organizations working to improve their communities by planting and caring for trees. Alliance for Community Trees provides resources and support to enhance local tree planting efforts and tree care efforts all around the country. So if you're not already a member, please consider joining. You can find out more at www.actrees.org. Big thanks today to our sponsors of the webcast series, the USDA Forest Service. Today's session is Creating Win-Win Internships. Developing a quality internship program allows your organization to access the wide range of talent that students and recent graduates possess. Properly managing a service core or internship program, be it one student or several at a time, can be highly beneficial both for you and for the students who are looking to learn your trade. But, like planting a tree, it's important to make sure you're integrating interns into your program in the right place, in the right way, and with the right resources and support. Today we've got two great speakers who are going to tell us how they've successfully integrated uh, interns into their programs and what they've learned along the way. First up is Carol Teeter, who is Program Director of the nonprofit organization Trees Forever. It also manages Iowa's Living Roadways, Visioning, Projects, and Trails programs for that organization. Carol has master's degrees in both English and community and regional planning from Iowa State University and a bachelor's degree from Northland College in Ashland, Wisconsin. She's worked for Trees Forever for more than 10 years and finds herself continually inspired by the community volunteers who devote so much of their personal time throughout Iowa and Illinois to help create a healthier environment for people and wildlife. Carol enjoys spending time outdoors and lives in a wooded neighborhood in southeast Cedar Rapids, where she battles garlic mustard and tries to garden among the deer. Thanks for taking some time this afternoon away from the deer and the garden to speak with us, Carol. Thank you, Leland. And I think I need to change my bio on our, our, on our website because <laughs> some of that is a little bit I can update it, I think, now. But anyway, I'm happy to be here today. I want to give everyone um, a brief overview of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, I have a few PowerPoint slides here, and um, and then I'll just I'll do a wrap up a little later. But um, as Leland said, my name is Carol Teeter, and I'm the program director with Trees Forever. In my little presentation here, I'm going to give a, a brief description of Trees Forever. Our experience working both with interns and AmeriCorps members, and um, I, I'll have some brief description of what they have worked on, and then in a, on a more broad subject, um, what the things are to consider when thinking about um, working with interns or, or other paraprofessionals, and how to make it positive both for you and your organization as well as those interns or AmeriCorps members. And then finally, where some of our former interns and AmeriCorps members are today. So uh, just very quickly, I hope many of you who are listening today are familiar with Trees Forever. 
Um, but in case you aren't, Trees Forever, um, as Leland said, we work both in Iowa and Illinois, so we're a, a regional group, although we do have some national education projects as well. But our mission, as you see here, is to plant and care for trees in the environment by empowering people, building community, and promoting stewardship. We've been at it for more than 20 years now. Um, we are a nonprofit 501c3, and we have staff that work in Iowa and Illinois. Um, we are headquartered, and I'm speaking today, from Marion, Iowa, which is um, near in, in the eastern part of the state. It's near Cedar Rapids. And then we have folks who work um, out of their homes throughout Iowa and Illinois and, and work more directly with the communities in those areas. Um, in the 22 plus years now that we've been established, we've planted more than uh, almost 3 million trees in Iowa and Illinois, that should say, and we've engaged um, volunteers who have given more than a million hours of service. We're proud that we've worked in all 99 counties in Iowa, which um, translates into 4,300 community projects, and one of our main purposes is to promote the role of trees and, and native plants. We do some prairie work as well in energy conservation as well as air and water quality. So we have worked um, at least for the last oh, 12 years or so with um, both interns as well as AmeriCorps members, AmeriCorps VISTA members, and Peace Corps fellows, and I'll talk about those um, and how they are similar and yet different here. Um, the interns that we've worked with, some have been high school students who are looking for experience working in professional offices. Uh, some, and probably the majority, have been college students or recent grads who um, have helped over a summer or, or a, a abbreviated time period um, and, and have, for the most part, most of them have worked for um, either college credits or for a nominal um, stipend that we've been able to provide. We don't have a formal internship program, um, so we don't have a formal application and orientation or training program for interns. Um, most of those folks who have worked with us as interns uh, have come to us through, they have some connection with the organization or we work with local colleges and there might be a professor who contacts us and says he has a student, he or she has a student who is uh, seeking some real world experience. On the other hand, our AmeriCorps programs have had more structure and starting back in 1996, uh, we started having uh, at least two AmeriCorps members who were um, Cited here at our, our headquarters with us, and and then through the years we've had some ongoing relationships and partnerships, I should say, with um, AmeriCorps members who are uh, officed with other agencies in Iowa and work with us on on discrete projects or you know specific projects. Back in 1996, when we started with the AmeriCorps program, it, there was a local Cedar Rapids-based uh, agency who applied to the um, Corporation for National and Community Service for AmeriCorps positions that uh, would be officed throughout the Cedar Rapids area. And uh, that's very similar to our current situation now, where we have currently we have two AmeriCorps VISTA members who are uh, in our Marion's, uh, uh, Marion office headquarters, and we have availed ourselves of those AmeriCorps VISTA members through the um, Iowa Commission on Volunteer Service. So, Iowa Commission on Volunteer Service wrote a proposal to the corporation for national and community service for uh, these VISTA volunteers or VISTA members. Uh, and, and they are in positions throughout the state. Uh, the the uh, Iowa, those that the Iowa Commission on Volunteer Service applied for, uh, they, within that larger proposal, they had Green Vista volunteers. And those are the folks who are here in our office right now as well as some other offices of nonprofits in Iowa. 
the big difference is people aren't aware of this. I, I wasn't until uh, we had the opportunity to uh, apply to the Iowa Commission on Volunteer Service for VISTA members. The big difference between the AmeriCorps and the AmeriCorps VISTA is that VISTA is actually the older program and it's more, uh, the focus is more on poverty and working with uh, community, underserved communities. And it's more, more than AmeriCorps, in other words, more focused on capacity building. So the AmeriCorps VISTA members who are working with us, the Green VISTA members, are uh, here to help build our capacity as an organization as well as the volunteer capacity of the communities we work with. And the AmeriCorps, uh, just straight up AmeriCorps members, are just pure, uh, are more of a pure service type of uh, program. So they they are out there working, getting their hands dirty in communities on tree planting projects, as well as litter and um, litter control and, and stream bank stabilization and, and energy efficiency is a is a big one for those AmeriCorps Green members. So. There's a slight nuance there that, um, as I said, I wasn't aware of. And then another program I had never heard of is the Peace Corps Fellowship Program. Uh, the, it's actually the Peace Corps Fellows Program in Community Development. And through that, we were able to uh, work with the gentleman here on the bottom right, uh, Dustin Heinrichs, and he was a former Peace Corps member who is now an alum of the Peace Corps and um, was able to go to grad school at the University of Southern Illinois at Macomb and was placed, had a placement in this Peace Corps Fellows Program in Community Development as kind of an assistantship. Those, you know, who went through grad school and on assistantships, that's kind of analogous to the fellowship program. And he uh, served with us for a year as is as are the AmeriCorps Vista members serving with us for a year. There is there are fees associated with this, and so for the Vista program right now, we are paying an eleven thousand dollar operating site fee, and the Peace Corps fellow uh, site fee was a little bit more than that. So uh, there there is a financial cost, but but there's there's a big reward um, with having these folks working with us. And I'll kind of outline that in the next few slides. So the, the work that they have done with us, both the interns and the AmeriCorps and uh, VISTA and, and Peace Corps fellows, range from general volunteer engagement, just again, capacity building. So helping us con connect with um, communities and, and uh, folks within those communities who are interested in helping not only with tree planting but tree care type of projects. And uh, they've done youth engagement and education, especially going into schools and doing um, educational programs and, and uh, working with the whole range, K through 12 and sometimes into college age kids to, to um, help explain everything from how a tree grows to what trees do for our environment. A big help to us has been GIS coordination. Uh, we did a street tree inventory in Cedar Rapids and uh, got a lot of assistance from interns. These were specifically interns who helped us with um, entering the data into GIS and, and uh, as well as doing the inventories. And then finally, more recently, we've had assistance from uh, the, our recent uh, Peace Corps fellow on Emerald Ash Borer uh, outreach preparation and, um, and outreach in Illinois. And so he's been working with communities in Illinois to um, try to anticipate, and in many communities in Illinois, they already have Emerald Ash Borer. So he's been doing education about that in those communities. Okay, um, common assumptions that people have about interns and, and AmeriCorps members, I'm going to basically use those terms interchangeably here in a lot of the rest of this, but the common assumptions is that they add to your labor force, or another way to say that is they build on your capacity. They bring fresh ideas and energy, they bring youthful energy, uh, we work closely with summer interns who are hired by one of our partners, one of our university partners, 
and through that program for 15 years now, uh, the interns have been working with us and community volunteers on a, a community landscape planning program. And afterwards, communities inevitably comment on how much they enjoyed working with the, the students, the young um, interns as part of that program. And then certainly uh, the interns, AmeriCorps members, uh, contribute skills that supplement our staff skill sets. The GIS is a good example of that. We, at that time, did not have anyone on staff who had the GIS abilities, and so bringing in those interns um, was something that, that, that uh, was a great benefit to our organization regarding GIS. And then more recently, the Facebook and Twitter um, I proudly, I guess, and maybe mistakenly pride myself on not being on Facebook, but certainly it's an important thing for our organization to be, and I'm slowly coming around to giving in for personally too. But uh, folks coming in at a college and high school certainly already have that uh, knowledge about those social media and, and have been helping us get up to speed on that. So um, I think I skipped a slide here. Nope. Uh, in order for it to be something that really benefits you as an organization, as well as the interns, uh, interns and AmeriCorps members, you really have to anticipate investing a lot of time in supervision and mentoring. And I would say for at least one person on your staff, workload will not go down because you have interns and or AmeriCorps members working with you. Um, workload is going to go up rather than be relieved for at least that one person who's serving as the, the supervisor or the coordinator of that program. So you need to be anticipating that you're going to have to invest time in the supervision and the mentoring and, of course, investing money. As I said, you know, these AmeriCorps folks who are working with us, it, it does come with a site, um, site operating fee. And Excuse me, expect to start with the basics. Um, anticipate needing to review with these interns and um, working in your office what professional attire is, you know, and what the difference is between what you wear to a planting, for example, and what you might wear to an educational event. And, um, and it's, I, I don't know, I have found it surprising over the years, uh, some of the, the, the need for that. And, and trying to make the distinction on what you wear on a Saturday night to look good is not the same as what you wear in small town Iowa to look good and to, to um, engage with others. And communication skills. Be prepared to start at the basics with how do you write a professional email and, and what phone etiquette is, is um, in a professional office setting. And one thing that, that we've been noticed, we've been doing a lot of training and um, personal review on our staff about differences between the generations and, and what I'm finding is there's, there's been an increasing reliance on emails by um, folks coming into the workforce and we've been stressing email is fine but you have to provide, you have to follow up with a phone call or a personal visit and so you need to be prepared to, to work with them on, on those kind of skills and then public speaking. Um, uh, you know, as we all have had to learn over the years, and what's the um, best way to offer a presentation, but even what's the requirement for projecting your voice, you know, and, and, and anticipating what the person in the back row needs as far as hearing your presentation. Uh, also, as a way to make a positive experience for the intern or the AmeriCorps member themselves, Include them in the staff in your staff meetings and your training. Uh, this is probably something that's really easy for you to do, um, and yet and yet is really important for them and, and significant for for those folks to uh, to experience what the real world professional world how it operates. And I guess I should have said earlier too to make it a positive experience. Another requirement I would say is have a job description. Make it clear what the expectations are of the intern and and then provide um, the, the guidance needed to achieve those expectations. And that is one nice thing about the AmeriCorps program is you're, you, you have to come up with 
those um, assignment descriptions and a formal orientation process as well as evaluations, doing a six-month evaluation and then end-of-term evaluation. Um, so also think about bringing interns or AmeriCorps members to meet with sponsors and give them a role in that meeting. So they're just not sitting there, but they might explain a project that they have worked on or, or um, something else that they have experienced working with your organization. I will caution, though, uh, AmeriCorps members in general cannot assist with fundraising. So if you visit with sponsors that should be related to program-related activities or, or um, things like that, they can write grants for projects that they are coordinating, but they can't help with fundraising for the organization. So you need to be careful about that if you're meeting with sponsors and bring an AmeriCorps member with you. Give interns an opportunity for leadership. I mean, this is a resume building experience for them, and it's also helping build our workforce. And so any opportunity that they can have for success and leadership is going to be critical. Uh, take photos, uh, especially as I prepared for this presentation. I realized we don't have nearly as many photos as I wish we had of, of some of our, our interns and AmeriCorps members. Um, who have worked with us through through the years, especially going back into the 90s, back before digital uh, cameras and such, uh, we really are lacking photos of those early years. And show your thanks, and show your thanks throughout the, the experience for the interns and the AmeriCorps members. And then at the at the end of their service, and the photo here on the slide is of Jason, who worked with us as an intern uh, and did a lot of GIS coordination for us. And, we um, loaded him down with Trees Forever regalia at his going away party that we had for him at the end of his service. And, and they, there's an investment in them, but I think there's an, you get more out of it as an organization than, than you put into it. And, and it's only right to, to show them how much you, they have meant to you while they were here. So um, we have folks who have been interns and AmeriCorps members with us who currently work with the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, one person actually uh, is with a college here in, in uh, Iowa as a sustainability director. And we have someone, and this had nothing to do with us getting a VISTA placement, but we do have someone who runs the Green AmeriCorps program for the Iowa Commission on Volunteer Service. And before that, she actually was a Trees Forever um, field coordinator. So she was an AmeriCorps member, became a Trees Forever field coordinator, and then unfortunately we lost her, but the Iowa Commission on Volunteer Service gained her as a Green AmeriCorps coordinator. And then me, I started with Trees Forever in 1997 as an AmeriCorps member, and I'm currently now a, a Trees Forever program director. And um, we have folks who we've done pretty well keeping in touch with folks, but we have lost touch with some of our, our alums. And so if any of you are out there listening to this right now, I hope you let us know what you're up to um, these days. So that's all I have, and here's my contact information. I guess we're going to have a question and answer period, but if anyone wants to follow up, um, this is how to get in touch with me. That's Thank fantastic. You. Thank you so much, Carol. Kelly, can we uh, open the lines for questions, and can you uh, instruct participants and how to ask their questions. Thank you. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1. Please unmute your phone and record your name clearly when prompted. Your name is required to introduce your question. To withdraw your request, please press star 2. Once again, to ask a question, please press star 1. One moment, please. And as we're, uh, people are thinking through their questions, I also want to remind you that you can uh, ask your question online through that Q&A tab at the top of your window. If you don't want to ask out loud over the phone, you can just type it in there, and we will uh, get that question asked and answered for you. Uh, while people are thinking of their questions and starting the queue, uh, I, I want to start just with a, a personal question. Maybe we can get, uh, Carol, your perspective on it. But you, you sort of touched on this already, and I want to dig a little deeper about what in your experience, is the best way to sort of manage having an intern? You already said it, it's going to mean more work for at least one person. Uh, what's sort of the, the best strategy for trying not to let this sort of additional burden uh, become too overbearing? Hmm. 
Well, having a good plan going in, I think, is essential. Having not just an orientation plan, but a, the work plan for that um, for that person coming on board. It, it you have to do that initial upfront investment, but I think once they're here and other things come up and other opportunities, at least you have that as a touchstone to go back to. Um, and then setting up, uh, we have weekly, uh, we call them VISTA check-in meetings with our two VISTA members who are here. And I should explain, we've had a VISTA member since last November, and her term goes until November. And then we had uh, a new VISTA member start in August, and his term will go until August, so there's some overlap there. But uh, we have uh, weekly check-in meetings because we have – they're working out with a number of our different staff members. And so in order to make sure that the communication flows, um, it, we have those meetings. And, and it gives me a chance. I'm kind of the, the traffic cop on in those meetings to make sure that that the VISTA members are, are not being overworked or um, are doing things that go outside of what they should be doing uh, within VISTA. So communication and having a plan up front, I think, is essential. Um, and before I turn it over to answers or questions, I should say, I am noticing I'm staring, in fact, at um, the screen, and I noticed that I got my email address wrong. Trees forever, there is an E in forever. So if you want to contact me, it should be trees, F-O-R-E-V-E-R, dot org. All right. And we do have a question. Um, yeah, we've got a question uh, over the web that I just want to ask. Uh, does the National Forest Service help at all with your program uh, with their summer help? I guess the question is sort of have you ever been uh, received interns or other sort of summer staff from the Forest Service? We have not, um, and we would be open to that. Uh, I, we haven't had that opportunity yet, and, and – uh, you know, especially with the urban forestry type of work, I think we would have lots to, to give folks experience with in that. Great. That's something to think about for any Forest Service staff who are on, on the line. Uh, maybe we can create a national internship program through the Forest Service. <laughs> uh, Kelly, do we have any questions on the line? We do, from Jean Kavinsky. Your line is open. Hello. Thank you. Uh, Carol, I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more on the uh, requirements for the AmeriCorps training as far as you had mentioned something about a uh, site operating fee. I know that they, at least my last time that I looked at the AmeriCorps website, it was about a $10,000 uh, annual salary that they received. So is that site fee related to that? or? Yeah. If it, again, the way we do it is is we we apply to the Iowa Commission on Volunteer Service to have a VISTA member position to here with us. And so we have never tried to tackle the big grant proposal to the national, um, the Corporation for National and Community Service. Um, I have experience with that with another partner who has we're, we're, we're been working on that grant proposal, and, and that's, a, that's a big challenge. Um, so we are fortunate in Iowa, and I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with other states, but the Iowa Commission on Volunteer Service does the big grant tap, and then we just have a simple application to them saying that, that we would like to have a VISTA member uh, positioned with us, and this is the work that they would do for us. Now, along with that, to help offset some of the costs, because the AmeriCorps members and VISTA members have health insurance and um, workers' comp and, and other um, benefits such as that. So to help offset some of those costs, we pay a uh, site operating fee. That's the um, for for our Vista members. It's eleven thousand dollars that we pay for that. And so uh, we're able to. We're lucky. We're fortunate enough to have some programs right now that give us the ability to to pay that fee. I don't know if that answers your question, Jean. Okay. So basically, you, I guess you would be grant funded. So if I was uh, to be writing a grant for uh, our programs, volunteer programs or whatever that I need filled here, then I would uh, write a grant and say I need to have that much money for a VISTA position then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Carol. Sure. Thank you. There are no further questions at this time. Leland, are you there? 
<laughs> yes. Good. Okay. <laughs> Sounded like someone was going to jump in with a question. Uh, but I guess in that case, we are going to move on to our second presenter. Next up today, we have Danielle Crumrine, who is Executive Director of Tree Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Over the past decade, Danielle has worked in various capacities in Pittsburgh environmental community. She helped to launch the Pennsylvania Cleanways of Allegheny in 2000, where she was the founding board president and longtime executive director. In addition, she's a leader in the Urban Ecology Collaborative, where she helps lead such projects as uh, MERGE, the Methods to Engage Residents and Grassroots in the Environment, uh, the Green Forum, and the first ever Three Rivers Bioneers Conference. Danielle's a member of the Clean Water Advisory Committee for Allegheny County and is president of the board for Grow Pittsburgh, as well as a board member for Gemini Children's Theater. Danielle's a graduate of Duquesne University, where she received a bachelor's in 1996 and a master's in education in 2002. The Tree Pittsburgh Board of Directors hired her in 2007 to establish the organization, and she describes her role as her greatest and most enjoyable challenge. Yet, I don't know how much of that challenge has been dealing with uh, interns and figuring out uh, the development of an internship program, but we're about to hear all about it. So thanks very much for joining us this afternoon, Danielle. Okay, Leland, thanks for having me. I should mention, too, that I actually started out as an AmeriCorps member also back in 1999, and that's how I got into this work. Um, it was not my field of study, but because of my volunteer um, experience through AmeriCorps, I just gained a, a love and passion for environmental work, and here I am all these years later. So I'm a big, strong believer in AmeriCorps programs. But Tree Pittsburgh, um, like many of your organizations, our mission is to protect and restore our city's tree population, and we're, we do that through tree planting, tree stewardship, education, and advocacy. And um, when I first started with the organization, um, I believe it was May, I hired our um, director of urban forestry sh shortly after, and one of his first responsibilities was to lead our first ever crew of, of uh, interns. And I'm not going to claim that we're experts on managing interns, but I think we've learned a lot over the past um, few years, and I'd like to show you all today how our program has evolved since that very first experience. Um, the first thing we do, like Carol, we do not have a formal intern program. Uh, we really start out by analyzing what our immediate needs are, and as a young, ever-changing organization, those needs change from year to year. So we analyze our immediate needs uh, to determine what sort of intern we're looking for, um, be it skill level, age in some cases. Um, we look at our own organizational capacity. Do we have the staff to manage these interns? I think you know anybody who has ever managed an intern agrees that it's a lot of work uh, because we want to give them a quality uh, enjoyable experience. Uh, so we're considering what are the long-term objectives when designing our program. Is it to foster the next generation of urban forestry professionals? Is it to create advocates for our urban forest? Um, is it to recruit and groom future staff members? I think depending on what your long-term objective is, that helps you design your program. And I will point out that a certain someone on this call who works for us now was an intern of ours for a few years, and we're really happy that we have her as full-time staff now. Um, so partners. Um, we have always gained our interns through partnerships. And we've had a strong partnership over the years with the Student Conservation Association, which is a, a long-standing organization. They do amazing work all over the country. They have um, an office here in Pittsburgh, and they place students in environmental jobs every summer. And we've worked with them over the years, and, you know, there's pros and cons to this type of relationship. And by analyzing the pros and cons, we've been able to – uh, work with them over the years to redesign the program to work best for both us and the students. And some of the pros of, of this type of situation, um, they come with crew leaders already, and these students are teenagers. They're high school students. They could be as young as 14 years old. 
Um, they're paid through the SCA, so that saves time and money on our end, uh, not having to worry about payroll. Um, they receive special training and career development from SCA. Uh, the discipline is off our shoulders. Um, that is all handled through uh, their crew leader and their um, home office. Uh, we have similar missions to SCA, so we're, we're working in tandem towards one vision. There is an opportunity to influence these students' career path and their attitude toward environmental stewardship. You know, we're getting them when they're very young, and there's a lot of um, good that comes from that. Um, some of the cons of this type of relationship. We have no control over who is hired, so SCA handles all of that. Um, the kids don't always know what they're getting into, and, and these students, they're, they're doing stewardship work outside all summer long. Um, even though the discipline is taken off our shoulders, that's also a con because we have uh, little disciplinary power. Um, there's often a greater identity with the SCA than there is with Tree Pittsburgh. Um, since they're hired through SCA, they wear SCA clothing. Um, students are younger and require more hand-holding and um, in some cases are less self-motivated. Uh, you know, for most of them, this is their very first work experience, so there's a, a really large learning curve. Um, the timeline is very short. We often will only have them for eight to ten weeks. And there's no opportunity for the kids to return a second year. Um, and one thing that I, that I missed here, often these students, uh, they come from all over the city, and they're working in a neighborhood that is not familiar to them, and we have identified that as a con over the years. Um, so how has this affected our program? Uh, year one, we had a full-time SCA crew. Students come from all over the city. Uh, they were managed by a full-time Tree Pittsburgh staff member. So this took a lot of time away from our other projects, and at that point we were a shop of two. Um, so year two, we said, all right, we need to hire a seasonal staff, seasonal staff to assist as a crew leader. So we had the full-time SCA crew again. They still came from all over the city, but we had an extra person on staff to help with the program. Still, we, we found it was still a lot of work um, on our end. Not as much field work was getting done. So year three, what we did... Um, we went with a part-time SCA crew. Uh, the students were still from all over the city, but what we did, we, uh, we paired up with two other organizations. We paired up with a local urban agriculture group called Grow Pittsburgh and another group that works on vacant land um, called GTEC, and we actually shared the crew. Um, and we took them on field trips on Friday. So it alleviated a lot of... Um, the time that my staff was spending, and the students weren't getting as burned out weeding and mulching trees every day. So they worked a little harder on the days that they, they did work. And in the end, they ended up accomplishing, you know, a lot of the same work they did on a part-time basis compared to when they were working full-time. Um, year four, we continued the partnership again. But what we did this time is we actually worked with um, neighborhood organizations who had summer youth work programs. So this time, the kids actually worked in their own neighborhood, um, and we worked with, with two different neighborhoods. We had the same partnership. Um, let's see. Again, we hired seasonal staff to manage the youth program in addition to the crew leaders. So this person came on, and they handled all the logistics of the program. Um, and the number of kids that we got each year grew because we were able to lessen the burden on our staff here, uh, which was great. And then also in year four, what we decided to do was, and this was through analyzing our media needs, we hired a summer crew of um, college-age students. So we hired four students. We have two trucks, and three days a week they drove around and took care of trees. And... I'm sure many of your organizations, you do special tree planting projects, uh, whether they're memorial trees or maybe they're demonstration projects, and you have an extra vested interest in these trees. So we needed to make sure those trees were cared for throughout the summer in addition to all of the other work that needed to be completed. 
So the, the, our stew crew, we called them, helped to uh, take care of what we called our special trees. Here are a couple of the girls who have worked with us over the years. Um, in the top left, this was from just this past year, uh, one of our neighborhood uh, program students. And in the bottom right, that's one of our SCA students. And we do a lot of training, pruning, basic tree care, um, and then the field trips that we instituted um, it was more of a professional development, showing them what career opportunities might exist. Took them to a tree nursery. We took them to um, a furniture making studio um, that uses all urban wood. We've taken them to the conservatory, uh, a variety of places. This was our entire summer crew this past summer, uh, minus the high school students. This is the 21 plus crowd. Um, so we had our four stew crew members. We had um, two nursery workers. We just started a tree nursery this year, so we brought on um, two folks for that. And we brought on two extra people to help with our U4 analysis, all of the um, data collection out in the field. So it was a big shop um, this summer. It was more activity than I've ever seen in our office. Um, and this is a picture. What we did is we took everybody to a pirate game, our baseball team. We all wore our Tree Pittsburgh black and gold shirts. And um, I think Carol had mentioned how important it is to make your interns feel like they're part of your team. And so we tried to do activities like that to build you know, a relationship. Um, one other thing I want to add that, that we've instituted over the years, and this gets to Leland's question about uh, effective ways of managing interns, is we start right off by sharing our expectations with the intern. And I have a document that my first boss, um, way back when, she actually sat me down and went through this one-page document that listed all of her expectations as a supervisor, uh, coming on time, just just her standards as, as a, a supervisor, and and I've kept that all these years, and I've tweaked it, and, you know, whether it's my full-time staff or interns, we sit down and go through the sheet, and I found that it's really, really effective because they know right away what, what your expectations are. Um, let's see. Uh, another thing we started doing this year is, you know, I, I think we all would agree that tree stewardship can get kind of boring sometimes, constantly mulching and watering and weeding trees, as important as it is, it can get monotonous, especially on 90-degree days. So we turned our stew crew loose with our flip camera that costs, you know, 100 bucks, and if you buy office supplies from Staples, they occasionally give you coupons for these kinds of things. So we, I don't think we even paid for this camera, but they just had a blast making videos for us. And this particular video, you see a screenshot here, uh, a local filmmaker volunteered his time to work with them and create a, a really professional looking video. And they're all really short, um, fun videos that you know, we're not quite sure what we're going to do with them yet. Some of them are instructional. We could use them um, perhaps in some of our educational programs, but um, it gave them an opportunity to be creative and have fun. So I really hope you, you take a look at these. I think they had a good time. We do exit interviews, too. It's something we started this, this year to gauge satisfaction and ask for feedback on how we can enhance the program. Uh, some other partnership opportunities that we've taken advantage of over the, over the years, um, work-study programs. Uh, I'm not sure if this is something that exists nationally, but in the state of Pennsylvania, if a student qualifies for work-study, they're allowed to go and work for a 501c3 organization and get paid through the university. So um, over the years, I've definitely taken advantage of this, and I have two students right now uh, from Chatham University that are working with us. Uh, high school senior projects, Eagle Scout, and Gold Awards. Um, as Carol said, AmeriCorps programs. Um, GIS classes and grad student research assistants. Definitely, um, again, that's that skill set that they could bring. Um, art school projects. 
our local art school, they actually deploy their students into the community to look for nonprofit partners to um, do projects that would help build their portfolio. Um, photography is, is a great one. Um, you might not necessarily want to use their graphic design services, but you know it's always um, helpful to have really high quality photographs. And there's also this program um, and I'm not sure how wide it is, but it, here in Pittsburgh it's called the Retired Executive Corps. And this is a group of uh, retired individuals who were professionals, whether it's accounting, law, HR, and they give back to the community. It's a great, great program. I worked with a gentleman to um, help rewrite my employee handbook. He was an HR executive from Westinghouse Corporation. So he brought, you know, 40 years of experience um, to somebody like myself who's very new in, in the HR world, has no training. So uh, we often overlook our senior citizens, but they have much to offer. And, um, you know, I would check in your city to see if there's some kind of structured organization that can connect you to some retired volunteers. Um, with that, I let's see, a couple projects I, I just wanted to make note of that we've used interns for in the past. Last summer, we had two interns come, and I was able to pay them a little bit of money. Um, I always wish I could pay more, but we did a mortality study of our street tree planting program, the same study that was done in New York City we replicated here in Pittsburgh. That was a great opportunity to use interns. Um, we have another intern that's been working uh, to look at putting together um, body, all of the research that exists about air quality and trees to help uh, create a literature review here. And then he's coming up with a, a project to um, plant trees along transportation corridors where we might be able to buffer communities from all of that air pollution. Um, Let's see. The interns that we have now, um, primarily one of them it will be working out in the field to assist my uh, stewardship staff uh, during plantings. The other one is more administrative. Uh, we have our big fundraising event every fall, so it's very helpful to have these, these interns. And we're giving them a wide range of experiences. Um, with that, I think that's all I have and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Once again, to ask a question, please press star one. And I'll remind folks again, you can type in your questions over the uh, the web through that Q&A tab. Uh, I have a quick question for you, uh, Danielle. It sort of has to do with things that both you and Carol have touched on in terms of not just using interns uh, to help accomplish your aims, but also to, to prepare them as the next generation of uh, urban forestry professionals and really making sure that they feel like they got something out of their time with you. Uh, everyone knows how difficult uh, the job market is these days, and so increasingly internships are becoming a stepping stone to employment. How have you been able to work with your interns to sort of describe uh, their time with you and, and show both give them something that looks like a, a very solid accomplishment to an employer and to help them describe it that way when speaking with employers? Hmm. That's a great question, Leland. You know, in the past, especially with the, the teenagers, we've helped them actually write the description for their resume um, since, you know, for most of them this is their first job. And um, so we've actually sat with them to help write the wording. Uh, for that. The older students, you know, I think f for our college students, of course, we are, um, hmm, you know, I don't know if I could quite answer how we've helped them describe what they've accomplished, but definitely sharing with them the results of their work in terms of statistics, um, perhaps writing down all of the training that they've received, but I actually look at your question more as a suggestion. <laughs> so I think that's a really <laughs> no, that's, good something we should do. That's, I, I get, yeah, yeah, that's food for thought for me. 
and thinking about again with our with our interns and uh, you know sort of looking at the state of the job market these days. Uh, I think what you've described and what Carol have described though have been really uh, solid, discrete projects that that all your interns have been working on and and are sort of serious accomplishments that they can present. Yeah, I mean, we definitely help them find jobs and stay connected to them and email them opportunities and help them network, um, send them to uh, workshops and things like that. So we're building them up and connecting them, but we're not necessarily helping them to describe what what they've learned and what they've accomplished. So that's actually a great suggestion. Kelly, do we have any questions over the line? There are no questions at this time. All right. Over the web, uh, I think a question regarding funding for uh, your interns, and this can go to both Carol and, and to Danielle. Uh, mm -hmm. Are most of your funds from grants, or is this just sort of general annual annual fund uh, monies, or, or are there specific uh, donations or other grants that you're getting for yeah. interns? Each situation is unique. Um, the two students that worked on the data collection in the field for our U4 analysis, I had funding to do the U4 analysis, and instead of having the company who, who did the report send their staff, I said, well, you could send me two, but I'd like to match it with two local students. Uh, so I was able to use my research funds. Uh, the work study is free. I don't pay a penny for that. Um, the AmeriCorps um, students, um, typically I will have to dig into my unrestricted funds to, to deal with that. Um, it really depends on the project and where, where I'm able to pull funding, but I've never had dedicated funds just for interns. Yeah, and this is, this is Carol. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and we have not, neither have we have had dedicated funds, although we would certainly love that. Um, most recently, we were able to apply and were successful in applying for Recovery Act funds, and so that's helped us um, with some of the um, more recent uh, AmeriCorps that we have had or VISTA members. Um, it's actually part of the state part of the Recovery Act funds. Um, and then years ago, yeah, it just depended on the on the specific opportunity and and what um, funding streams we had at the time. Our interns that have helped with the inventory, the street tree inventories and GIS have been, um, they have not had a stipend. They did it for college credit. So while there was a cost for our staff time, uh, there was no cost for the actual interns for that. Okay, great. We've got one other question over the line. Are there any specific or sorry, the, the web, are there any specific qualities that you look for in an intern candidate? Are there any interview questions that you think uh, really help to reveal those traits? That's a great question. Danielle, do you mind if I go? Sure, please. Um, we use a modified version of the interview process that we use with our own staff members. And, and so we have an interview team of uh, three or four people sometimes. and range from their experience with the resource itself, the uh, trees and what their background is, to the experience that they've had working with teams and, and we try to get at some of their communication skills as well. So we kind of modify our own interview, inter, interview process that we use for our staff with those folks. As far as qualities, you know, certainly we want, we're looking for folks who have good communication skills and um, a commitment to being volunteers since they're going to be working so extensively with volunteers. Yeah, I would echo exactly what you said. I think communication is so important, um, especially for our stewardship staff that's out on the street and, you know, it never fails that someone would walk up to them and, and ask them about our organization or what they're doing. Um, and the other thing that we look for is work ethic. You know, do, do they understand what hard physical work is and, um, you know, are they going to get burned out easily? C can they handle it? Uh, so that's definitely something we look for, their comfort level working outdoors. 
And I also, I, I, I typically give preference to students who are studying this. Are they in the, are they environmental studies majors? Are they uh, forestry majors? Um, you know, looking at that long-term goal of, of building um, the group of professionals that are out there, I think it's important to give them some work experience. Okay, great. Uh, do we have any other questions over the line? There are no questions at this time. All right. And I think in that case, we're going to wrap up for the day. I want to thank everybody for uh, listening in and joining us this afternoon. The presentation, a, uh, the recording of the session, and a related resource list will be available in about one week's time. And Alliance for Community Trees will email all of those resources out to everyone who completes the brief survey that you can see on your screen right now. Please take just a minute to uh, fill that out. It'll help us make sure that we're providing uh, webcast sessions on topics that you care about and you want to learn more about. Thank you to our presenters, Carol and Danielle, for sharing with us this afternoon, to everyone who listened in, and to our sponsor, the USDA Forest Service. We look forward to seeing you on our next webcast. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for participating in today's conference call. You may disconnect at this time.